Hi everyone, I'm glad that you're here today. Uh, we're going to talk today about how we can find the correlation value, that's our R value, by hand. So I'm going to show it to you two different ways. Okay, remember that when we're trying to find it on Excel, it's the coral, right? But we're trying to find out what is the math behind this. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that you take out your notes right now, and you're going to want to make sure that we take notes. Okay, so let's write this down. The first thing I want you to do is remind yourself that R stands for the correlation coefficient, and then I want you to write this information down here. Now, it is really important that you decide and remind yourself the following things. This is R equals the sum of the z-score for the values right here, the z-score for the y-value, and divided by n minus 1. Okay, so we have to talk about how we find this out. And one thing I would really make sure before we get into anything is that you remind yourself that n stands for the number of pairs of, of scores. So if I have three xy pairs, the n is 3. It's not 6. We're not counting x and y individually. Okay, so we have this written down. If you need to, pause the video for a moment. And then we're going to do an example. Okay? Okay. So, here is what I have right here. Our first step is to find the mean and standard deviation for x and for y. Now, I've already given you the mean and the standard deviation, but I want to show you right here. First off, our n value is 3 because there are three points here. But I want you to see this right here. How would I find the average for my x values, my average for my y's? If you'll notice, I've actually done that. So let me show it to you right here. So you can see that. I actually found my standard, my mean right here. I took my 5, my 7, and my 4. I made a small table, and I added them together with parentheses, and I divided by 3. I, that is how I got 8.7. You can do the same with the standard deviation, and we can do the standard deviation on our calculator, but I'm not going to make you do that, okay? Just so you know, I took these values here, I added them and I divided by 3 because there was 3 of them. I did the same for the y. I added these together and I divided by 3. So that's how I got 8. Okay? Okay, so let's go back to where I was. And I'm going to escape out here and check in. Okay, so we're back here, and I just talked about how we can solve for the mean and the standard deviation. Let's go back to our steps, though. So, first step is to find the mean and the standard deviation for x and for y. Okay? We've done that. We looked through it. Either it's going to be given to you or you're going to have to calculate it. Step two is to find the z value for x and y. And I don't just mean for one x and for one y, I mean for all of them. So you need to find the z score for this 5, this 7, this 14, this 4, this 9, and this 11. Okay? If you have forgotten how to find the z score, remind yourself this formula. Z is equal to my score minus my mean over my standard deviation. I know that I don't have parentheses there, but this is implied that there should be a parentheses around this when putting this in our calculator. So I'm going to show you what I did, because since this is to find the Z value for X and Y, I made another chart. And this is what I did, and I apologize it's a little hard to see here. But what I did was I made this chart right here. And I put my x and I put my y. Then I found my z scores for my x and my z scores for my y. And then I took each z and x and multiplied them. 
We're getting a little ahead of ourselves though, so let's remind ourselves right here. Here's my first x, this 5 and this 5 right here. I did 5 minus 8.7. Where is 8.7 from? Well, remind yourself where that was from. 8.7 was my mean from the original, and 4.7 will be my standard deviation for x. I'll use the same for y, 8 for the mean, 3.6 for the standard deviation. Okay, so I have this. I've done my mean and my standard deviation, and I've used that to find the z-scores for all of my x's. And then I put all of those values right here. I did the same for all of my y's, and I put all my values here, okay? I want you to stop the video right now, and I want you to make sure you have this in your notes. I also want to make sure that you know how to put this into your calculator. Okay, next, what we need to do is now we need to multiply the z values for each x and y pair. And if you remember, the reason we're doing that is because this is part of our formula, right? We're taking the z-score value for the x's and the z-score value for the y's, and we're multiplying each pair of them, and then we're going to find the sum of them. Okay, so that's what I did here. If you look right here, this right here is finding the z-scores of x times the z-score of y. I took all of them and multiplied them, and then what I did was I found the sum of them. Okay, my sum was 1.719. Okay, now I want to go back here and talk about the rest of the formula. And the rest of the formula says this. It says divided by n minus 1. Remember we said at the beginning that n stands for the number of pairs of scores. So I know that n is equal to how many pairs I have. Well, let's look back here again. And how many pairs do I have? It appears as if I have three pairs, so I'm going to divide it by 3 minus 1, which is 2. And now I have my end answer, which is a correlation coefficient of 0.86. Okay, so that's great. We figured it out from by hand. But now I want to talk about how I can do it on Excel, okay? And I want this to be very clear for Excel right here. Okay, I think this is so much easier on Excel. And remember, we could just do the coral, but what if I said, please show me some work, okay? So first I'm gonna find my standard deviation equals standard deviation. Remember, it's a sample that we're doing here. Okay, and the great thing if you're unclear of whether this was a sample or the whole population, we'll check that answer real quick. Is that what we had on our PowerPoint? Let us see, 4.7, that's what I have, 4.7, okay? And I'm gonna do the same for my Y. I'm gonna choose my sample, I'll pull down. Okay, and you know what, this does not look good. Let's make this a little bit better, and let's just kind of round that a little bit more. Okay, great. I'm going to do the same for the mean. And equals average. Hopefully you'll be able to type this just a little bit quicker. 
Okay, great. And this, again, I don't like that. I want it to be nice. Okay, 8.7. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my z-score again. So I'm going to do equals parentheses. And this is where it excels so much quicker because I can literally take my score minus my mean parentheses divided by my standard deviation. Okay, negative 0.7. Yeah, let's just kind of make that a little bit better. Oops, too high. I always like to round to the nearest hundredth. Let's check. Is that the same thing we got on our other thing? Negative 0.79. It's a little off, but that could just be due to some rounding. It's close enough for us today. And I'm going to make that go down. Oh, and it said divided by zero. So let's see what happened there. Okay, uh, hopefully you fill that all in there. One thing I don't think I added at the beginning was you do need to make sure you use absolute reference. If you don't use your absolute reference, it will make this so that the numbers change and that's gonna be a huge problem, okay? So make sure you do the absolute reference, okay? And my numbers are matching up to what I did before. And now I'm going to do equals and then I'm gonna do parentheses this times this, and then I'm going to pull it down, okay, and you know, I'm going to just again change that so it looks better, okay, great, now I'm going to find the sum equals sum, and I'm going to pull that down, great, and now I'm going to do my correlation, which would equal this divided by 3 minus 1, and I should have gotten uh, relatively the same number. Could be a little off with the rounding here. Um, again, we can use the coral function, but I also, if we ask you to show it by hand, this is acceptable to do it like this. Okay, make sure all this is in your notes. Um, I would definitely make sure you're making this table. I think it's really, really helpful. And now you can go back and work on the worksheet. Thank you.